softens towards her and kind of comforts her for a minute. Mm -hmm. And at this point, Kaylin's just like, just kill me, Shoda. I know you want to anyway, so just please, please do it. And tries to make one of the snakes bite her, but Shoda waves them all away. Basically because that would undo her promise if one of the snakes bit her. Which is just kind of funny because she said that Kaylin had to sit there with the snakes on her this whole fucking time because she was worried about her trying to kill her before they left. But now she's saying that if that would have happened, that would have broken her promise. So was her plan to, like, wave the snakes away and she was just trying to, like, contain Kaylin and fuck with her brain? Like, she wouldn't have actually killed her if she tried to move? I kind of get the feeling that she wasn't going to really try and kill Kaylin, but she needed her to be freaked out so she wouldn't come close to her. I feel like Kaylin's power is strong, like we've been saying, and Shoda recognizes that and wants Kaylin nowhere near her. Okay. She might be a witch woman, and she might be able to fuck with people's minds and apparently the entire environment surrounding this area all at the same time, but she's not infallible. And it seems like Kaylin's power only takes a split second. And apparently all she needs to do is touch you and you're done. I still, I just, I still think it's kind of a dick move. Oh no, totally a dick move. Covered in the snakes and not just be like, hey, you stay sitting over there. All right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to kill you, but stay the fuck over there. Right. I mean, right. You wouldn't turn around right in front of her right now. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. She would have you in a heartbeat. So you need to keep her at an arm's length. And keep her from thinking about doing anything rash. (laughs) But Caitlin, at this point, begs Richard, because Shota won't fucking do it. So she's like, Richard, please just fucking kill me. Take my knife out. And he's like, no, I'm not going to kill you. Duh. So she tries to do it to herself. And Richard grabs the knife from her and, like, holds her hand behind her. All like, no. (laughs) Yeah, well, and that sends off the, the spider sense. It's Spidey Sense. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And Richard remembers this from before. Every time he's touched Kaylin and the sword at the same time, he's been like a nine volt battery on your tongue. There's like a warning sign. And he's thinking that's probably what this is. It's probably the sword being like, hey, buddy, don't get too close. (laughs) Something dangerous, which goes with everything everybody has been telling him. Even Zed. Look, she's fucking dangerous, dude. Yeah. And Zed is cool with Kaylin, so she's not necessarily bad, but she's something to not be fucked with, for sure. Right. And still, chapter 31, Richard has no idea. (laughs) 31! (laughs) He asks Kaylin if it's true that she almost touched him. And at this point, Kaylin is like, yeah, I don't think she actually says it, does she? She just kind of is quietly like... In anguish, crying on the ground. Yeah, at this point, Richard has the knife out of her hand, so I don't think she can actually do anything unless she's going to go steal a weapon from somebody else or, like, grab the sword, which I don't think she could do, even though she already has done. It's weird that it just occurred to me, Kaylin has used the sword herself with no ill effect, but when Richard touches Kaylin and the sword, then, you know, Spidey sense. Well, she was named as a seeker, technically, when that happened. Oh, maybe that's it. Yeah. Maybe that, it wasn't just a passive, okay, you're the seeker, now you have the sword. It was, like, actually a necessity. Yeah, like, legit magic shit. But she's she's just super depressed now. She she didn't answer him, she just, she kind of wants to die. And Richard is not having any of this shit. He's like, Shoda, this is only the truth, as you see it. And I'm not going to kill Kaylin just because your brain told you she might fucking try to use her power on me at some point. And Shoda gets, like, super emo about it and just sadly nods at him. I think it's because he's kind of saying, okay, this is what your opinion is, but you don't really have any proof. Which woman or not, you can't show me anything to prove to me that you're right. So when it comes down to it, I'm just not going to let you kill my friends because it's not worth their lives on your word. I feel like as a witch woman, she should be like, ah, yeah, that's logical. (laughs) Because I feel like she would know you can't like try to fuck with time. Right. And manipulate things the way you see them. It's going to happen no matter what he does. 
And the seeker is the seeker. You can't phone that shit in with him. He's going to get down to the bottom of it. Right. She tells him, though, that Queen Melina has the box. She's not going to have it for a long time. And she asks Samuel to lead them out of the reach and not to touch any of their shit. (laughs) Specifically the sword. Especially the sword. Including the sword. Don't fucking go for the sword, Samuel. Don't mess with it, Gollum. Before she walks away, though, she warns them if he does succeed, don't ever come back. Because if you do, I will kill you. Because now she's, like, super pissed at him. Yeah, she's done with Richard and all of his shit. (laughs) Much less patient than the Birdman. Yeah. This is the second new, like, okay, there was a lot of people that he met in the Mud People's Village, but this is, like, the second new big character that Richard has met and she does not care for him it seems. So does she... Did him a lot of favors but she's still like I don't want to see you again. Is she threatening him because she doesn't like people coming into her reach like it's just like a this is my home base don't fucking mess around with me don't come here type thing I have to have this hard shell to where I'm not gonna just be like yeah come back for for a beer next time or is it because she's mad that he didn't let her kill Kaylin? So even if he's right in not killing her and he does end up succeeding, he's like, she's like, I don't want to hear it because you didn't take my advice, asshole. Well, I think it kind of stems from a couple of things. I think, firstly, the comment she made while she was appearing to Richard as his mom, she said something to the effect of, you don't know the cost that I have to pay to be able to do that for you. So I think she's implying that she may be a witch woman. She may be very, very powerful, but it doesn't come out of nowhere. Almost like a wizard, you would assume. Well, we know, well, we know wizards have to be trained and they like go to wizard school and they have to be taught by like a head wizard. I've only heard a story like that before. Oh. Um, and so they have to put in a lot of time. But witch women, you don't know if it's like a school or if they have to give like a blood sacrifice to do some of this magic and it doesn't say. So I'm just thinking that whatever she does, it comes at a pretty big cost to her so for she's... one. And then for two, Richard didn't heed it. So she had to do all of this shit for a waste. Now she still gives him the advice that he needs at the end. But after she put forth this great effort and after Richard was like, mm, yeah, I don't really care what your opinion is or what you had to do to to learn this stuff. And he never even asks her what it is she has to do. She just goes, you'll never understand the cost to me to be able to do this for you. And he isn't concerned at all. So I think all of those things tied together is kind of off-putting for Shoda. Yeah, he's just like thumbing his nose at her, kind of. Like, yeah, don't give a fuck. And she really believes in the stuff that she's telling him. So for him to like, like you said, thumb the nose. I think that's a thing. Maybe it's not. We'll find out by the next time we record. So, yeah, I think for Richard to do something like that towards her kind of rubbed her the wrong way. I guess I could see that. And he apologizes for it as she walks away. Because I was like, I wouldn't fucking apologize if he thinks he's in the right for everything he did. Yeah, then you never apologize. Right. (laughs) She threatened your friends. You're trying to save them. You could say, sorry, you're pissed. Right. (laughs) The the classic non-apology, but, I mean, Richard's a good guy, so he gives a real apology, and that's the end of the chapter. Yeah, he gives an apology to her, and she doesn't even acknowledge anything he has to say. She just continues walking away, doesn't say a word, and he can see a tear running down her cheek. Yeah, she's she's seriously, seriously upset. Maybe not seriously, seriously, but she's upset. <laughs> For cereal. For cereal. <laughs> Well, I think that does it for this chapter. If you guys enjoyed it, or if you wanted to let us know if we did miss something, shoot us an email at podcastatt at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook by searching all the things. You can find us on Instagram at podcastatt. You can find us on Twitter at podcast underscore att. If you guys wanted to help this show grow, you can go to patreon.com slash podcast att and make a pledge. It would really help us out. We appreciate the hell out of it. Or you could do something like go to iTunes and give us a rating. Yeah, that would help us out a whole heck of a lot. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you real soon.
Bye.